Hi everyone. In this video, I would like to talk about drugs and addiction and explain how addiction really works. The popular belief for years has been that addiction is caused by substances, by specific substances that cause addiction in people and that we call drugs. This belief system comes from early scientific experiments on drugs, on substances that cause addiction. In these experiments that were performed on rats, the rats, the animals, were kept in cages where they were completely isolated and they had no way to meet any of their social needs. As soon as the rats were given some addictive substance like cocaine, for example, the rats would become extremely addicted to the substance. So the scientists assumed that the substance was addictive per se, that the substance had an addictive effect. But more recent studies have shown that drugs alone are not responsible for addiction. There is a more complex underlying mechanism. And in particular, with more updated experiments, where the rats in, in, that were tested were not isolated in cages, but rather were in a very um, fulfilling social environment with other rats with stimulation, the same rats would not get addicted to the same substances. So for instance, if cocaine was given to these socially fulfilled rats, the rats would taste the cocaine, but they would not get addicted to it. These scientists also observed the fact that not everybody gets addicted to the same drugs. For example, when a patient undergoes a surgery in a hospital due to an accident, and they're given very strong addictive substances like morphine, they don't necessarily get addicted. They can go back to their normal life and keep living like before without becoming hooked to the morphine. Same goes for soldiers who come back from the war and who were given substances during their military service. Not all of them become addicted to the substances, but some of them do. So what really underlies addiction? Now in this video I want to propose you my theory, which is actually an extremely simple explanation of how addiction works, and quite logical really. Now addiction, unlike the popular belief, is not so much about the substance that we use, but it's about how we use it. And it's not constrained to only certain specific substances, but almost to any kind of substance. And addiction happens in the following dynamic. When we use a particular substance in order to replace and to simulate the satisfaction of a certain real need that we actually have, but without actually satisfying the need. I'll repeat that. <laughs> addiction happens when we use a substance or a behavior or anything really, to simulate the satisfaction of a real need that we actually have, but without actually satisfying the need. So we give us the simulation of the satisfaction of the need without really taking care of the need. I'll give you an example. Suppose that a person has a need for affection and human warmth, but for some reason they don't have access to that, and instead they take sugar, refined sugar. Now, sugar, especially refined sugar, causes certain reactions in the brain that stimulate the production of certain hormones that make us feel the sensation of warmth, affection, love, and uh, sweetness. So in a way, it simulates the feelings that we have when we have um, our need for affection, when we, our need for affection is satisfied. The feeling of warmth, the feeling of sweetness, um, the, the feeling of love. However, sugar doesn't actually satisfy that need, obviously, because it, it's not giving us human warmth, it's not giving us affection, it's only stimulating our brain receptors. So what happens once the effect of sugar runs out? So after the effect of the substance has taken its place, at the peak, it starts to go down into a valley as it is dissolved and dispersed from the body. And at that point, the effect of the sugar starts to dis disappear. The stimulation of the feelings of sweetness and warmth also disappear. However, remember the need is still there because we haven't satisfied it. So what happens is that now that we, we no longer have the simulation of affection, we no longer have the sensation, the illusion of having that, that need satisfied, as this, this simulation effects disappear, we are faced again with the reality of our need. We are faced again with the same feelings and sensations of needing affection, of needing sweetness, of needing warmth, but 
um, without having satisfied them. So they're probably even stronger than before. And if the last time we reached out for sugar in order to compensate these needs, this time we will have an even stronger urge to reach out again for sugar or for even more sugar in order to try and um, get rid of these needs. So this is how the addiction cycle happens. We simulate, we substitute an actual real need with a substance or a behavior or anything that simulates the satisfaction of the, that need without actually filling it. So the need remains unfulfilled. We still have that need. And as soon as the effect of the substance fades, we feel that need stronger than before. And so we, we get the urge, the impulse, to consume that, that substance even more. This happens, of course, until we actually meet the need, until we actually take care of that need that we're trying to satisfy it, and then the need will be really satisfied and we will not be feeling it anymore. For example, let me give you an example from my own culture of how food is used as a drug, as a substitute for human connection. In my culture, food is a really uh, big thing. People are very strongly emotionally attached to food. They're very addicted to food, really. Let's use the right word. <laughs> Why? Because of the following mechanism. When children are growing up, they have needs, they have desires, they have their own identity to express, um, of course, like, like all children. However, we live in a society that is not really consciously evolved to understand what human needs are <clears throat> and to understand um, how to uh, meet those needs in children so that they evolve in a healthy way. Instead, a lot of parents um, just try to repress the needs of the children because they don't know how to take care of them or they themselves have needs that are unf unfulfilled. And in my culture, food is used often as a substitute for real connection, for, for really listening and understanding the child and really feeling their, their needs and their desires and helping them to meet them. So the typical Italian mother will completely ignore the actual needs of the child and instead they will just force feed them <laughs> with very stimulating and delicious food, Italian foods. As a result, the child gets the message and starts to learn to suppress their needs by using food as a substitute. So when they feel a need to be felt, to be seen by other people, to be understood by other people with their needs and their desires, instead of um, reaching out for people who can see them, who can feel them and understand them, they often will reach out for food. And this is how Food addiction is pretty much born in my country. Then, of course, the food indus industry uh, plays a big role by preying on these people, by uh, making foods as addictive as possible, by creating them so that they're extremely appealing and they have a very strong um, substitute of effect for those things that we are missing, like affection and so forth, so that people get cooked on them even more easily. And this goes on and on until people uh, in their adult life uh, find no other way to connect to each other than, by, than through food. Because food is used as an illusion of connection. It gives them the illusion of real connection by substituting that feeling of being truly seen, truly felt by another person, and being truly understood. And so people sit down together um, at, at the table eating food, and the food they're eating is really the only, thing, the only reason they're together. Because they're actually not feeling each other, they're not understanding each other, um, they're not um, seeing each other deeply. So this is one example of a very, very common a type of addiction that is very normalized everywhere in our world, and particularly in my culture. There are many other ones. For example, money is often used um, as a drug to substitute feelings of being in control, of being powerful, of being abundant. People who lack these things, who do not feel abundant, do not feel powerful, and therefore have these needs, but who learn to suppress these needs because they learned from their childhood belief systems that uh, restrain their ability to feel really powerful in a healthy way, abundant in a healthy way, etc. These people often use money as a substitute to simulate those feelings. So they will try to earn as much money as possible in order to be able to control people through money or to be powerful through money or to feel abundance through money while never really truly feeling in a healthy way their underlying need. Another very often used drug in our society is sex. Sex is often used as a substitute for intimacy. 
especially in a couple, when people um, have um, problems with in intimacy, they're not able to truly feel, truly see each other, truly connect to the deep level. Um, they often use sex to get to get a simulation of those feelings without actually meeting that need. So in a way, sex is what keeps them together, but um, in a in a non-real relationship because there isn't a real intimacy, a true connection uh, in the relationship. There are many other examples of many things and substances and um, actions that are used as drugs in our world and they're they're absolutely not limited to what we normally consider drugs like cocaine, heroin and so forth. There are many many more and many things that are considered normal are very very often used as drugs. So again it's not the thing itself, it's how you use them that makes them addictive. So another example would be um, social media. Social media can be used as a drug in the following way. It can be used as a drug to substitute for the real needs of a feeling of significance or a feeling um, uh, of attention from other people and so forth. These are real needs that need to be fulfilled in a healthy way by getting healthy attention and by, by getting a healthy uh, feeling of significance uh, that is real. However, often these social media act as a substitute by giving us a simulation of a feeling of significance and a simulation of a feeling of having attention from other people that substitute the real need. And this is how social media can also get addictive. Other typical drugs that are widely used in our culture, like smoke, and which are actually called drugs like smoke, um, alcohol, caffeine, they also simulate certain things. For example, caffeine, caffeine in coffee simulates um, the feeling of movement. And so it gives us the illusion of that we're taking action, that we're moving when we're actually not. And that's why it is one of the drugs that is one of the favorite drugs for people who work in offices where they're sitting the whole day and they have that need to feel that they're moving because their body, their body really has a healthy need to move because that's what a healthy body needs to do. Alcohol is usually taken as a substitute for, for allowing ourselves to be our true authentic self. Um, a lot of people, um, of course, repress their true identities because we grew up in a society where, um, where we're, we're taught that many of our authentic parts are not acceptable, are rejected, are not loved. And so a lot of people are restrained and do not fully show themselves authentically to other people. And alcohol gives us the simulation, the feeling that we can truly show who we really are. Another very common thing that is used as a drug is materialism. But by materialism, I mean focusing on the material world, on the physical, objective, external world, rather than the internal world, the esoterical world, the con our consciousness, our inner world. And this is often done as a in order to simulate our need for understanding. So in order to, for, to achieve a, a healthy and fulfilling understanding of life and of, of things in general, we both need to explore the external world and the internal world. But because the exploration of our internal world has been so rejected and suppressed, especially in Western society, a lot of people um, overly focus on the external world in order to uh, simulate the fulfillment of that need. This is especially typical, but not necessarily limited, to scientific and technical circles. And by the way, the opposite can also happen. For example, a person can use the inner explore exploration as a drug as well. Again, in order to achieve a fulfilling and healthy feeling of understanding um, of our world, we need to both explore the inner world and the outer world. But some people have rejected their outer world exploration and completely focus only on the inner world exploration, giving them a simulation of a true understanding when they're really actually not um, paying attention to the external world. And this is very typical in many spiritual circles and religious circles. So as you can see, pretty much any behavior, any action, any substance can be used as a drug. It's really not the thing itself that is the drug, it's the way we use them. If we use them to substitute for a real need, we then will get addicted because we're not actually fulfilling in our need in a healthy, real way. Um, we're giving us the simulation, the illusion of feeling the need while not really feeling it. And that creates the uh, cycle of addiction. So how can you tell the difference between actually meeting a need 
and using a drug to give you the illusion of meeting the need. Well, it's really simple. When you actually feel your need, you don't get addicted to the thing that is filling your need. Because guess what? Your need is filled <laughs> and you feel ful fulfilled and completed. You're not gonna fall into a low of the substance you're using where suddenly the need, the need becomes even stronger than before because the need has been fulfilled. <laughs> it's really that simple. So whenever you feel addicted to something, whenever you feel drawn irrationally to something or overly drawn to something, especially if you think that that thing is not really good for you or you don't feel that it's really satisfying you at a deep, true level, then that is, pos that is a pretty um, clear sign that you might be addicted. Also, another pretty good sign is that if it's something is really filling your need, then it's not likely that you're going to find someone trying to sell it to you, uh, trying to force you to take it. So <laughs> if you feel that you're being bombarded with that thing, like for example com through commercials, or people are really trying to convince you to get that thing, then that might be also a good sign that that's not actually fulfilling your need. Because that kind of hustling, that kind of... Um, trying to force sell things to people usually comes from a space of lack from that person who is trying to use the lacks of other people to feel to simulate the feeling of their own lacks by basically projecting their addiction onto others well i hope this video was um, exhaustive enough i um i don't make a lot of videos in english i usually make them in my language italian so because my english videos are rather new a lot of the topics i'm talking about might sound rather new to you. Anyways, I hope to make more videos in the future and please leave in your comments, your feedback, whatever in, in down below. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.